Hey folks, welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now in this episode, we're going to talk about ways and means to build a sustainable long-term wealth creating portfolio. And in a challenging environment like this, where we perhaps are heading into a recession in the global markets, things are looking a bit sticky on the equity front. This is, I guess, uh, topical to talk about how to not just build, but to even protect your portfolio in these challenging times. We have with us Ajay Tyagi of UTI AMC, who's joining me on the show as my guest today. Ajay, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for being with us. Uh, you know, uh, these are hard times, right? So how should investors really look to build their portfolios for the long term? given that there is so much noise in the markets and different sectors and different companies do well at different points of time. Yeah, good afternoon, Sonia, and thanks uh, for having me on the show. Uh, you know, I would just start by saying that the golden rules of investing haven't really changed over the last 100 or 200 years. And obviously, over the last century, we know uh, from our history textbooks that things have been volatile every other decade. If we just you know, uh, go back and refresh our memories of the last 20 years, I don't think there was ever a time frame when we could have said that everything is hunky-dory, there is nothing lurking out there, uh, which could be a potential risk factor for the market. So, you know, one has to always go back and say that uh, while things would be uncertain, the world has been an uncertain place and would be an uncertain place, what are the real golden rules for creating a strong portfolio, which is able to withstand, you know, such kind of uh, events that keep coming in. You talked about recession. That's the most topical thing, as you rightly said. Uh, but there must be something to actually fall back on, which would be able to, uh, you know, take care of uh, such kind of events, which would be, you know, as people say, anti-fragile. And I think it's there uh, that I would say quality investing plays a very, very important role. Quality investing basically, basically can look through cycles. It need not be something which has to be invoked at a particular point of time and to be actually flipped over to embrace something else at some other point of time. I think this is one of those strategies which you can cling on to and hold on to through the cycle and through many decades. But yeah. Ajay, correct me if I'm wrong, right? I mean, it hasn't co the definition of quality investing really changed compared to what it was, say, 10, 15 years ago. I mean, the same companies that have been growing for the last 15 years may not be the next, may not be the leaders of the next, right? Purely because of so much disruption, digitization, new players entering. So just define high quality investing for our viewers. Sure, I think uh, <clears throat> I'll come back to this question on disruption in a bit, uh, but let's start by defining quality. I think different people would have different definition of quality, but let's uh, just uh, you know uh, stick to the most objective definition of quality, which is nothing but the ability of a business to generate return on capital substantially higher than the cost of capital, and that too across the cycle, not at a particular point of time of the economic cycle, but through the cycle, through its various ups and downs. Now, uh, this is when I would say 80 to 90% of businesses get knocked out. Because do remember, uh, not all businesses, in fact, very, very few businesses are able to hold on to their profitability, uh, able to hold on to their return on capital being higher than cost of capital at various points of time in the cycle, particularly during the downturns or I would say recessionary uh, times in any economy. So I think that's the most dependable definition. Uh, one can look at the behavior of businesses in 2008 and 9, when the world was struck by the financial crisis. One should look at the behavior of businesses during 2020, when the world was struck by another unexpected uh, uh, event uh, called the pandemic. And if you are able to figure out businesses, which even during the most, uh, I would say, uh, punishing circumstances, have been able to deliver strong profitability, then they really must be high quality businesses. Yeah. Okay, so once you select a company, right, to invest on, based on quality and growth parameters, so companies that have perhaps survived the crisis, survived the pandemic, uh, how do you go about constructing your portfolio? How much is the influence of the benchmark? No, that's a very good question. Uh, I would say that uh, quality investing itself can be actually uh, uh, practiced in many different ways. I would say that the one that comes naturally to us is to be agnostic of the benchmark, not look at the benchmark at all 
and truly be bottom up in the portfolio construction approach. Because if you look at the benchmark, then you sometimes can actually get carved down by these heavy weightage sectors, which may not qualify as sectors which possess uh, or which have high quality businesses in them, but you still would want to actually own one or two businesses so that you don't go too divergent from the benchmark or too divergent from the outcomes uh, of the benchmark. So I would say the best way to exercise the quality strategy is to be bottom up. Don't look at the benchmark, just look at those businesses which will help you in your wealth maximization. Mm -hmm. And I think history and data tells us that businesses which have strong return on capital and therefore strong cash flows and have the ability to reinvest these cash flows at a very healthy rate are eventually the ones which create a strong wealth for their patient investors. Do remember the operative word here is patience. Sure. You really have to stick on to them through thick and thin. Okay, yeah. you know, let's take an example here, right? Just trying to play the devil's advocate. You said that quality investing should result in wealth maximization and one should have patience. Case in point, right? ITC. A great company, strong pedigree, uh, no red flags. and But the stock, I mean, you'd call it a quality stock by definition, but it has done nothing for investors. Now, of course, this year was a turning point, but the last 10 years, the stock has done uh, virtually nothing. Uh, your thoughts on how does one approach it at a time like this? No, absolutely. You've picked up the right example, Sonia. Uh, ITC would still qualify as a high-quality business. Of course, it churns out huge amount of cash flows every year effortlessly. But the point here is, I also mentioned about ability to reinvest these cash flows back very, very profitably. I think this is where ITC has been facing a challenge. If you look at the history of this company over the last 40, 50 years, it sure has been a great wealth creator. Has it been a great wealth creator over the last 10 years? Answer is no. And this is where you have to dig in a bit deeper and realize that uh, cigarette consumption in this country has actually been declining. This is not a business which can uh, which can actually experience volume growth in its core business, the core business which really generates these cash flows. Uh, this business is not going to grow at six, seven, eight percent volume growth. Volume growth could possibly be flattish, and I think that's the most important reason that one must actually look at when you are searching for quality along with sustenance of quality by way of reinvesting these cash flows. Uh, for future growth. So I think that it's the second part which is missing in companies like ITC and it's not alone. I think in that camp there are many other high quality businesses which now have this inability to experience a long growth runway and therefore they just fall off the radar in terms of uh, you know prospective wealth creation. So how long do you wait? I mean, how do you know? So someone who is perhaps invested in ITC, they would hold on to it, right? But then there's a uh, there's an opportunity cost. I mean, you'd rather have put that money elsewhere in a high growth stock. At what point do you decide that, okay, now this stock has fallen off the radar. So even if it's good quality, I'm going to let it go. I would say, Sonia, uh, first of all, one has to uh, de-anchor oneself from the price at which they have bought any particular stock. I think that's the biggest mistake which many of us make. They just feel that, look, we bought a stock at a price of 100. Uh, I know that the prospects for this business are very poor, but the, uh, but the price is 70. Let me at least wait back for the price to reach back uh, 200 rupees, and then I'll sell it off. I think you really wait only till the point that the data around you is not supportive of the original hypothesis that you had for this business. So let's say the original hypothesis for HDFC by an investor was written in the year 2000. And it was about the fact that cigarette business is really the core heart and soul of ITC. It continues to grow. It continues to show very strong margins and cash flows. And I think this will keep compounding at the rate of, let's say, 14 or 15 percent. By the time you uh, reach 2014 or 15, you realize that possibly this is not happening and you therefore wanted to dig deeper into why is it not happening? And if in the next couple of years you realize that, look, this is not happening because the number of smokers in the country are reducing or the frequency of existing smokers is also going down, then this is something which is really going to hurt the business in the long term in terms of the growth of these very cash flows that we liked in the first place and because of which we wrote this hypothesis. So I would say that's the point, uh, uh, you know, when the data around you is not supportive of your hypothesis that you would want to bail out regardless of your entry price and regardless of what the current price is.
Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's a fair point. Let's do one thing. Let's take a quick commercial break. We have lots more to talk about on Smart Money, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a bit. Stay tuned.